Hey there, everyone. This is Kyle Hutchison. I work at Trey. I'm an account executive. I'm joined by my colleague, Thomas. He's sitting right next to me. He's going to keep his audio off. But we're going to run you guys through a group demo. You know, This is just an informal session to kind of get you guys up to speed with Trey, a little bit about our industry. I'm going to go through a couple of slides. We're going to spend the majority of the time in the actual demo. Thomas is going to show a really cool workflow, kind of how he built it and talk about several use cases. Then there'll be plenty of time for Q&A at the end. And we'd like to do live Q&A, show how you would solve things in our product live. So that QA that I asked a few of you to type in earlier, that's the box to ask your questions in throughout the whole presentation. So uh, just kind of give you guys a little bit of context about our space. So in terms of integration, iPaaS, this is we're not recreating an industry. Ever since there's been software, there's been an integration space. If you look along the green line there, companies like Tipco and Informatica created in the 90s, primarily to on-premise and they're sold to IT, you need to be a specialist. These were really heavy duty integration platforms. Then kind of like the progression of kind of moving to the cloud, you have companies that are popping up, disrupting that space. So your Boomies and your MuleSoft, Boomi just got acquired by Salesforce for six and a half billion dollars earlier in the year. So it's just you know, really big industry, a lot of business here. And they're kind of a combination, Boomi and MuleSoft still doing some pretty large deployments primarily sold to like IT as well as doing um, some on-prem cloud. And just as cloud adoption becomes more prevalent, APIs are a much bigger deal. Most companies have them. And people start to expect across the board, technologies are easier to use. You start to get this thing where everyone wants to connect their different software platforms. So that's where companies like us are coming into the space and we're creating kind of what is more or less like a citizen automator. You don't need to be a specialist and providing a tool that's much easier to use. And we don't classify ourselves as much as like an iPaaS tool, but more or less like a general automation tool across the platform that can be picked up by a business user. But the more technical you are, the more successful you are on our platform. Kind of right in the middle of the screen there, you can kind of see what the tool looks like as a little builder. But our customers really describe our platform as being flexible, easy, powerful, and scalable. And kind of one way to think about Trey is the connective tissue that lies between all of the different apps across your workplace, you know, across different departments. We're not just talking about creating connection between marketing tools, but how you start to think about marketing is driving all this great content. How do I connect it to my sales team and my engineering team? You know, all the tools across my organization, there could be, depending on the size of your organization, hundreds or thousands of different applications. And we're the platform to give you a nice interface to organize all of those different platforms. And just to give you a little bit of a taste this is the type of integrations that people are driving across all these different departments. A quote from Santosh, who used to be over at Segment, he's now moved on to Drift, uh, is you get that light bulb moment with our platform. There's a little bit of a learning curve where you need to kind of understand the nuances of our system. But once you get past that, you can really see that through connecting to APIs of all these different platforms, you can really build out any type of integration. And we're displacing a lot of companies that are purely built on APIs. If you're really technical and you can do some pretty cool things with our platform. We've heard people replacing backend ERP systems or just kind of replacing like an account-based marketing model using Trey. And you know, how are we this flexible? Kind of what are the different tools? It's really that we can connect to platforms really in any way. We can build unique connectors to different platforms. So you'll see this in our system, whether it be GitHub, Salesforce, Oracle, different connectors will build it through our case specific. We also have a universal connector where you can leverage any of the connectors we built to specific endpoints, as well as connect to platforms that aren't necessarily built. You know, we have over 200 connectors as part of our platform. So when you join, you have access to all these connectors, as well as, you know, if you're dealing with on-prem systems or you have uploads that need to take place, this is really common in marketing. Take a CSV file and just upload it into our system. You can do some ETL transformations as well. So given our flexibility across the space and all the different areas you can pull our platform in, we're getting a lot of first movers from a lot of different sections of their company. I like to call it the NASCAR slide. You see Fortune 500s like IBM and SAP, as well as really fast growing companies like Lyft and GitHub and Outreach, as well as just companies that are really well known, the FICOs of the world. And so kind of across the board, attracting audit different use cases. One just story in particular, I know we have some guys from IBM on the call, but they came to us about a year ago and they're trying to solve a business problem that every B2B business struggles with. It's like, how do I get the hottest leads to my sales reps? And so there's a lot in the middle of what they did, but we're going to kind of show a little bit of kind of like this 
problem. And specifically what we want to focus on the demo today is you have a source where you have leads coming in. So we're going to focus on intercom and what you do in the middle to organize the content. So check your different databases, whether it be Salesforce or you know, a backend Redshift database, and then appropriately assign that lead to the correct person. So the customer experience moves forward in a very simple way, but it's a good experience for everyone. So surfacing that hot lead. Let's jump in to see how the trade platform works. I'll switch it over to Thomas. Thanks, Kyle. So yeah, what you see here is our platform. As Kyle alluded to, we're going to do a quick demo on Intercom and the use case around how multiple, a lot of times in your organization, different teams might use different tools. So for example, a customer support rep or a customer success engineer might be using Intercom to answer tickets from a customer. Sometimes there might be requests where they need to pass the information into an engineering team or perhaps to a finance team or a marketing team. And they can use this tool to automatically sync that data over um, automatically without any manual process in between. So the way Intercom works, just from user perspective, if you click on our help box here, this is kind of our app builder. If you click on chat, you can start typing in, I need help, something like that. And once this message comes in, from the agent side, this is what it looks like. So you'll have conversations assigned to you. So today, uh, Kyle just kind of came in with a very simple request. He said, hi. I asked him what he needed help with, and he said he had a very important message he wanted to get to the engineering team. So as such, uh, since on the intercom side, it's mostly just customer facing for very direct questions. And so in order to pass this on to the engineering team, I made a quick demo to show if you were to type in a keyword such as sync, uh, we'll have this message forwarded to a Slack channel. And in that example, a very simple example to show in Slack is just simply because it's very easy visually to see that message come through on Slack. So we'll see that come through. So this is Slack. So I had just used this keyword, hashtag sync. And so that specific message was synced over here with the complete conversation history to Slack. So now let me switch this back to desktop here. And so let's just dive a little bit into the actual workflow and what it's doing. What you see here is kind of what I built out as a simple workflow from here, whenever a note is added by an agent. So the keyword that I put there, hashtag sync, it checks for that keyword. So if this pattern was found, then specifically assigned to me, because for demo purposes, I only want that to be looking for my messages, then it'll go ahead and send that message, retrieve all the message history and send it to Slack. Now, in the example, Kyle had requested to have his message forward to engineering. So if you wanted to branch this out to kind of different forwarding systems, you can look for various patterns. So for example, maybe I want to sync this to engineering. You can make that to the message to instead look for sync to engineering. You can have another one, just duplicate this step. And perhaps you want another one that's sync to marketing or let's say product. Perhaps there's a product feature request that you want to sync to product and this will be sync to product. So in that way, instead of just doing a simple Boolean, I can start doing things like branching. So for each different value that I'm looking for, I can send a message to different groups. So this branch, let's call that engineering. And we'll call a second one product. As you can see, these labels uh, just correspond to the ones that you want. And I can add as many branches as I'd like. So let's remove these steps. As you go down to the bottom, these are just some steps that allow you to not just retrieve the conversation, but you can also get the user and agent details as you append each message. Down here in the very bottom is where I send the Slack message. So here's where you can start using your imagination to see where you want to pass that information to. So let's just, an example, there might be more engineering reps on Zendesk or as a service desk, there's also different tools like Salesforce Service Cloud and stuff like that, where each team might use a different system. And in order to pass that information there, you can do these message passing automatically. So let's just pull in Salesforce. Zendesk. 
So with this workflow builder, you're not limited to passing information to and from two different systems. So it doesn't have to be just from intercom to Slack. You can go, you can take one message and even forward it to multiple systems. So that's as easy as just creating a step here and saying create record. Perhaps I want to create a case. Now you can fill in as many fields as you want. Let's just use a description field. If I want to give it the same message that as I had forwarded to Slack, I can just drag this connector snake over the get message step and I'll get the value. And this will give you the conversation a message like I showed in the Slack demo. But let's just use an example to see perhaps you now want to add additional details from the conversation message. You can drag this over the intercom step and use any of the conversation parts that are included in the intercom message. And selecting these, Steps are very easy, just using the drag and drop tool and clicking on those. So some of the benefits here are obviously not everybody in your organization is going to have intercom. So in order to pass message to and from those different systems so that various different groups in your organization can see the message, you can do that automatically and look for different keywords. And secondly, we find that a lot of people using the manual process to create these cases cause a lot of errors. So obviously, there's human error involved in passing that information and creating cases themselves. So having this automation also excludes not just saves time needed to create those cases manually, but also excludes any room for manual error. What's really powerful, kind of what we saw so far, is just seeing that Thomas just built this kind of right before the workflow. Typically, we might show a quick little build as well as data flowing. But what we want to do today is kind of show more or less a completed build to kind of show two things. So it's like, this is what a completed workflow operational looks like within Tray. So there's a couple more steps than just like something that we might show over like a simple code of showing data flow. And some like nuanced steps and some nice things in here that make it really easy. And again, you don't have to be a developer to put this together. It's a drag and drop interface. And the little pieces of logic are all things that you don't need to know any type of development language to build. Thomas could, if you like to, he can drag on for the people who are a little bit more technical, you could drag something onto the screen, such as like a script step, if you want to write a little piece of JavaScript. And that's actually a, a way to kind of reduce the amount of steps. And then one thing to note too, if uh, we didn't really talk about all the different connectors, I'll, I'll have Thomas go through that. But with the script step, where we, we see customers are building out things to consolidate multiple different steps, that's actually where we'll actually pay attention to that and build out some kind of helpers. So. Maybe you walk them through all the different types of connectors that we have. So we just kind of show them everything that they have available. Yep. So in terms of connectors, there's three main sections. We call these core connectors in, in the first part where you can build logic and branching like I showed. You can also do looping as I've done down here where you can loop through lists and collections of items. The second section is helpers. So a few very straightforward examples could be a date and time helper where when you're uh, Syncing data between two systems, a lot of times the date formats don't match up one-to-one, -one, so you can use that to reformat your dates. Text helper, I've shown an example here where you're looking for a keyword. That's a very easy example. And like Kyle mentioned, you obviously have the flexibility to use a script step. So we try to make our platform usable for both technical and non-technical uh, users. So if you'd like to write your own script to do some data transformation or mapping, you can do that with the script. But a lot of times when we see a lot of users writing the same script to do the same things, we end up just turning them into helpers so you can use it out of the box. So that's the second section. And then the third is just our service connectors. So these are the intercom, the Salesforce, Zendesk, basically any service that has web APIs, we can build a connector around it. So once you're on our platform, any of these connectors here are available to you. And if you need to use new ones, that aren't here, you can always use our generic HTTP client to connect to that, or you can request for us to make that and talk to your account manager. We'll be able to work something out. So for today's session, we can kind of switch a little earlier to go into some live Q&A. So if anyone has questions, so for kind of like what we covered so far, feel free to type it in through the questions. The one question already came in that's just kind of relevant to what we're going over is asking about connectors specifically. It's from Eddie. So it's like, if we have our own API for our technology, can we build out the connectors in Tray? 
to use with R and other platforms? So the, the answer to that question today is no. All the connectors that we build out are in-house uh, specifically for quality control. We manage everything from the design and development. And what's really powerful with owning everything in-house is one slide I mentioned earlier, we have an internal tool called Connector Press. So we can turn out these connectors pretty quickly. And depending on the plan level that you're on, anywhere from two to four weeks um, turnaround time. But it's also for the maintenance of all the connectors and different platforms, you know, they may release new APIs. We have a team that's monitoring all that information. And if anything is updated, we update on our platform. But this is actually one thing to note on that point. And this is actually Thomas and I were, are working on accounts together in this regard. When new updates are rolled out, your API connectors and the workflows that you might have across your platform do not break. So authentication that you're using and you already have built for all your workflows remains the same. You just have the option to go into your workflows and then update to the API connectors. So those are the type of nuances but are also really benefit to your long-run maintenance and ongoing success using a platform like Trek. A uh, good question coming in from Kenton. How do live events work? So Webhooks has a question. Thomas, why don't you run them yeah. through Webhooks? So as you've seen in this example, the trigger that I've selected here is node created by agent. If I want to replace this trigger, here are all the options. You'll see here, you can use our generic webhook trigger to send any data payload to this URL. What all the automated triggers you see here, including intercom, outreach, Salesforce, and all those, any event-based trigger you see here are based off webhooks. So we've essentially built a wrapper around the service to be able to create a webhook via our service. Um, if you have other webhooks you'd like to set up cut like that are more custom, you can use our generic webhook trigger as well. And now, since we're on the page of the triggers, another common trigger we see people use is a scheduled trigger. So if the service you're trying to connect to does not support webhooks, then you can use the scheduled trigger to run at a scheduled interval and pull for new data. This can go as fast as you know once a minute to kind of mimic a real-time uh, experience. So another question kind of going off of ID's question earlier. Uh, this is from Hadar. So I have a product which I would like to have a connector for in your platform. What should I build, prepare my product to be able to do that? So first off, Adar, if you've received any emails from the, the sales rep at Trey, definitely get in contact. That'd be something we can handle with you one-on-one. -on -one. But just APIs for your product is all we need. So we work with REST APIs as well as SOAP, different timelines for build for both of those. But you know there are plans that we tie to building out connectors. So happy to help you, but definitely get in touch. Good question from Eddie. So what kind of security certs does your platform have? So SOC 2, um, I'll have Thomas go to his screen to uh, the Trey Trust page. This is a really good resource. It kind of covers all of our specific security and any, anything to do with runtime and um, everything with our backend. And this is just to give anyone who's looking at our platform some clarity for everything that we, we have taken care of. A really common question that we get quite a bit is connecting the two platforms, Asana and Salesforce. This is something that you, you can do in our platform. Uh, the, the one thing is kind of like just like looking at the platform and the screen that we have up here. So Salesforce to Asana, Salesforce leverages webhooks. So that top tile could be replaced with Salesforce to listen for events. Asana back to Salesforce. Asana does not have webhooks, so that's where you would have to leverage the schedule trigger to send anything back from Asana into Salesforce. But how our platform works, so for example, if Thomas just clicks on the intercom, all the operations to the right side, if he clicks that dropdown, those are all the API endpoints that you can access for these specific connectors. So for both Salesforce and Asana, we have multiple endpoints built out. So we're pretty much most use cases between those two platforms, we can build out a certain time of automation. Uh, so Tyler, definitely be sure to get in touch with your account executive if you haven't already. He can run you through uh, that process there. One question coming in from Andrew Driscoll. Can you show a REST API example? So I'm pulling up an API documentation page, and this is for Teamworks, the project management tool that you can use with your 
it's in your organization. So let's pull up an example of tasks. So I'll also pull up a connector here just to see how it matches one to one. So you'll see each service has one connector. And like Cal mentioned, within each service connector, there are multiple operations. So when you see in within the API documentation page, under a task object, any of these operations that you'd like to do, we can create an operation for. So for example, create a task, update a task, those would be individual operations. And you'll see here, create task, update task. So these would be examples of if we were to build that connector for you. And one of the other options that we had mentioned was the HTTP client. So for those of you who are familiar with connecting to your own REST endpoints, this works very similarly to Postman. So you can use any of the REST operations, post, put, patch, get, and all that. So you would be able to put in your URL, any query parameters or body that you'd like, and be able to connect to uh, those REST services. So those are the two main options you can go through. So either speak to your account manager about creating service or endpoints that may not be supported currently, or you can try it out yourself using the HTTP client. One thing to go on that's really popular with this HTTP client. So for example, clicking on teamwork, if any of the operations, the API endpoints that we have built out as part of this platform aren't available. So we don't, for every connector we build, we don't build out 100% of the connectors. We usually build it out for case specific. And while we're building it, if there's certain ones that may be beneficial to others, we'll develop those. But think of it as like anywhere from 25 to 50% of uh, the connectors are built out. So then we leverage the HTTP client to access all the additional endpoints. And if you do become a customer, if there's specific endpoints that are vital to your business, you can request those as part of a support ticket. And then we would just leverage this universal connector in the interim uh, while, while it was getting uh, pushed through.